Okay. Well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do actually two talks. The first one is this, um, and uh, one is going to be about these cameras, and that's going. And I'm going to have these as separate, uh, as separate YouTube videos. Um, the you know, whew, this thing is going to be noisy, isn't it? If I oh, I have to put it way over here so it's out of the way of my hand. You still can hear me though. Um, Okay, we're going to talk about the Lenovo camera versus the Evo. And everybody's talking about, you know, I mean, there's people talking about the virtues of using the Evo. There's nobody doing comparison shopping here. Okay, now, and I own both of these cameras. And I will tell you that this is the better one. And this is why. It comes with two batteries, two external batteries. So you can charge these batteries. Um, you can have... It using one while you're charging the other. Um, it also offers you a charger so you can charge the other one without the other one. So um, you can have one charging while the, the other one is being used by the by the camera. And um, I'm pretty sure I remember having a charger. I, I don't use it so I don't know where it went to but I know it, I'm pretty sure it does have a charger. Um, let me see if it says on here that it has a charger. Uh, it. Where does it say it? Somewhere in here it says it's got a charger. In any case, it could just charge it up with the camera and then just take it out and put it, you know. But I'm pretty sure it's got a. It's got a. Ability to charge separate from the camera. Anyhow. Um, it comes with two batteries, and the batteries are so have got so much power in them that you can literally run this camera for like three hours um, at 4K or something without it like really or some you know maybe maybe an hour but I mean just just crazy amounts of time on VR 180 at 4K, and that's kind of just the basics of what you need. Now the the Evo can supposedly do more. It can do 5.7K video, um, but the problem is, is that it stores in its own format, and that format, if the thing ever fails, is unsalvageable. So it, so you, you always run the risk that whatever you did is not going to get recorded. So you're going to lose stuff. It's not dependable, and um, this is at least this is what's been doing to me. And so every test that I've ever done where I've recorded video with it, regardless of whether it works or not, um, I mean, whether it's good or not, it's the question is, is, is it dependable? And it's not. It, um, it will not, um, if, it, if you let it run on forever and you don't stop it, then it will, it will stop itself, but it'll leave a corrupted file that you can't salvage. And the software that you use has the it's the 360 software that they they give with it has to run on Windows. You can't use it without that software, so you can't even load the file in and uh, onto a VR headset, say an Oculus Go, without having it going without bringing whatever it recorded directly through that software and doing stitching or whatever the heck it thinks it needs to generate an output file. Now, I can see why you need stitching for 360, but I can't understand why you would need it for VR180 when all VR180 is, is um, at the very basics, two fisheye lenses recorded in video, which is all this guy does over here. The, the, the retardedness, the, the simplicity, and the idiocy of the whole thing is, is that this thing is really just dumping the recording of two CCDs, of uh, two see two video chips um, that are being exposed to the light from two fisheye lenses that are at a, at a width that's apart uh, at a human distance so that you can produce two fisheye image outputs and you can take that into any oculus go and load it up and watch it if it's in P mp4 format in peg4 you can watch it and you can tell um, the Oculus Go to put it in split view, stereo split view, fisheye. And if you do that, then you get yourself a VR output. 
there's an alternate VR um, format which is equi rectangular format which just means that you take the sphere and you unwrap it onto a onto like a cube or something onto a you you unwrap it onto a onto a cylinder cylinder so the 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 um, poles of the sphere get um, kind of warped out uh, across the edges of the cylinder and the rest of it gets um, so around the sphere it is un, it is one to one the same pixel ra ratio whereas at the at the top and the bottom the pixels are actually warped out of out of and the reason for that I guess is so that they can work with higher resolutions and they can do stitching and they can get more resolution out of it through stitching and you know but the thing is is when you're working with fisheye lenses if you're only working with two fisheye lenses in your Korean VR 180 video what are you going to be able to do with stitching that's going to mean anything unless you're somehow trying to do some de destabilization but what are you doing in the way of destabilization that's actually producing um, high resolution using fish eyes. I, I can't I can't fathom it and even that if you're doing something that's extra to it why not offer the ability to produce output in standard fish eye without the stitching like they do with the Lenovo and the Evos don't they don't let you they don't give you that choice they force you to use their software and they force you to work the way that they want you to work on a Windows machine. So they won't let you access this device on Linux. They don't permit you to output straight MP4, and they don't permit you to st to create a standard fisheye image uh, movie. Okay, and they do on the Lenovo. On the Lenovo, that's the only way to work. And with the Lenovo, whenever you're interacting with the camera, the camera does not have. A LCD screen on the back. Actually, that doesn't even make any sense for a fisheye for a VR 180 camera to have a screen on the back because everything that's in front of it pretty much is going to get recorded. So if you're just aiming it at the content, it's going to get recorded uh, whether or not your um, whether you know it's not or what it's going to do or not. Just keep in mind in VR 180, these are fisheye lenses. They're like super macro lenses and um, they're they really the only things you really see well are the things that are just like point blank in front of the camera um, the stuff that is further away um, you will not be able to see much detail in anything you know even if you're if you want to take pictures of birds the uh, take movies of birds the only way you're ever going to see the birds is if the camera is sitting on the ground in front of the birds and the birds are like within six inches of the camera and I know this because I've done it and um, it's the only way so it's like it's like as if anywhere that you would put your head if you had limited resolution on your um, big deal uh, anytime you have limited resolution on your uh, on what you see in the center of your eye or whatever which is what this stuff will do um, anything that's that's outside of well anything that's outside of about 15 degrees of um, of a radius of your view um, anything that's within that is going to be so low rest that it won't even matter the things that only matter are the stuff that are up close so personal experiences this is the reason why VR porn is just taking off with loops and bounds with VR 180 format is because all the models have to do is be right there in front of you to be effective and so um, this is also the reason why the movie industry is really not going to accept VR 180 is because you can't do distance shots, you can't do telephoto shots, you can't do any of that stuff because it ruins the stereo experience. So the only kind of content that actually is useful is where you're one to one in front of someone. So what kind of storytelling can you do with that unless you're immersed in the experience and you're the protagonist going through the story so that's the only kinds of experiences the killer app for VR is going to be what's called um, is, is going to be um, what everybody in the um, in the what, what you're seeing a lot of which is basically meditation apps where you're put in an environment around a deer and whatever and they come walking around you and 
that's kind of the killer app is is um, meditation. So people that are going to be getting these cameras um, um, are going to be doing them mainly for meditation. So they're going to be creating. They're like going to be taking video of monarch butterflies in Mexico and then p selling them to somebody, and then somebody can then take that video content and sit there and observe and alert uh, and loop all these monarchs flying over them and then they'll just be able to breathe and sigh and, and they'll be in the middle of the city in their business office and all of just all their concerns float away because monarchs are just flying past their face and the reason why I know this can be done is because on someone already did it and I've already taken that VR video of them doing the monarchs and I've looped it several times and I've made my own videos just for my own personal use to actually um, feel see that experience okay and um, and that's the that's would be the future that's probably the best future for VR the other one is um, one that I would push is um, the idea of a photojournalist uh, journalists pretty much in general carrying around a VR 180 camera with them anytime they do a story where they're on the scene in front of people at least using the VR ca camera probably attached to a cap and walking around interviewing or collecting any kind of information in addition to whatever they're doing because if anybody was to say well it's all lies all the news is lies all they have to do is pull out the VR 180 camera that's been doing consistent video especially with the Lenovo which the content if you do it um, you can set 4K in every 15 minutes, and it will let you know when it stopped recording. And so then you start talking to somebody, you put that thing in inside of a cap and put it behind some sort of screen that uh, nobody can see what's in your cap, and this Lenovo sitting up there recording them, and you're interviewing them, and they're talking to you, um, and you're recording with the Lenovo. There's no way anybody could take and make a deep fake of the VR video and make it work in 3d because people's brains are so much uh, better at being able to recognize um, stereo 3d content or able to discern things that even the AI uh, in deep faking would ever would ever be able to compensate for and even deep faking is such an art now that you can't even it's not like you can use the program to just instantly deep fake somebody you have to actually uh, work with it and I'm not even going to mess with it. I, I, I've got the software sitting on a drive, but I'm not going to even mess with it, okay? Because it, I just can't imagine doing that to someone, okay? Um, I, I got it because I was curious, but I thought, yeah, I don't even go through with this, okay? But um, thinking about it and and contemplating the idea of deep faking and all that stuff, um, how do you, how do you um, attack it? You use VR cameras. And so that's the reason why I'm compelling people to get VR cameras and also to use VR headsets. It's not for the 3D effect. It's really that your life depends upon it because of the existence of deep faking. They can now fake anything 2D. So we need to go to 3D to make it much harder for the AI to actually fake the 3D. Okay, because that's going to be much harder to do um, to deep fake 3D. It'll be a lot easier to deep fake 2D than it is 3D. So everybody needs to use these cameras if if you care about that your news is even going to be relevant. Also, it's very hard to edit um, VR and and for not people not be able to detect when the edits occurred. Um, there will be jumping, and uh, one problem, however, with these cameras is the audio and the video don't sync very well, and so that needs to get fixed. But um, this is your best bet if you're going to do a VR camera is this Lenovo. And the problem is, is Lenovo could stop making these or they're stopped making these. And uh, Evo is still going and I don't know why and this, this camera sucks. It um, You can't depend on it. You don't know if it's going to record the video. It's a shot in the dark. Um, and it produces videos that are that are of non-standard format. They have to be converted through their software. It depends on Windows. And my next video is, is to talk about why we should not even be using Windows altogether. And I'll cover that in the next video. But um, it isn't for that reason that I'm saying this. I'm saying that, that you should be able to use it on Linux. Um, uh, hardware that can't work on Linux. If it can't work on Linux, it shouldn't it shouldn't even be bought. You should not even buy 
the hardware if it can't work on Linux. The reason why is because the cameras themselves, their in their their embedded systems are usually based on Linux. So you can't put Windows on these embedded systems because Microsoft would charge them money for the the stuff that goes into their internal working. So why even put Windows in there? Put Linux in there. And so it's either Linux or it's Android, and it's usually Android, and Android is Linux. So why even use Windows in the first place? It's because ever all the consumers are over there. So why are the consumers there? Because the consumers are not willing to lift a finger for their own sake to actually get good quality stuff. You see, the thing about Linux is that it's always going to be dependable. It's always going to be there. It'll never be. It'll never come to the point to where it'll be that the device you've got will become a, a doorstop that it will end up on a on a useless heap inside of a goodwill if you've ever gone to a goodwill or any kind of thrift store go look in the like the, the section where they got electronic stuff it's filled to the brim with stuff that will never be able to be used because it depended on software that ran on windows the, uh, on version of Windows that nobody uses and they don't even support the software and they might not even offer the licensing for you to even use the software that means that it wouldn't it wouldn't even run unless it could connect with the main website and verify that you had the ability that you had the license to permit you to even use the software which is the way they do things these days is they keep everything locked behind licensing because they want to control the consumers to keep them from keep them from um, using stuff they've already bought they want them to buy the next piece of hardware they want all that other hardware to end up on a scrap heap or as a doorstop they don't they have no interest in you actually maintaining the value of the things that you buy and because of that, we as consumers, since we're always buying the next thing that comes out and the stuff that we've got that we've that that we had, like old iPads or whatever, that end up on trash heaps is because nobody can use them because the apps don't install on them. Even the apps that were there that you could install are not there anymore because Apple won't offer them to you. Um, that kind of behavior is causing our money to not have any actual value. That's the reason why um, we have inflation and all of this other pr problems we have in the world is because we're not able to maintain the value of the stuff we buy. The stuff we have that we buy is not a eternal commodity um, to the ability uh, it, that is the life is extensible through being able to fix it. We can't fix any of the stuff that we buy. And so the stuff is basically worthless you know after a year or two it's worthless it's just a it's just a doorstop and it's designed that way by people that make these hardware and we as consumers don't hold them accountable we as consumers don't prefer that they use Linux and use um, open source methods of making the software accessible to us because if we did then we would be able to control our rights and our abilities to use the stuff we buy and that's the reason why we need to use stuff that's either Android or Linux based or actually better than Android just Linux um, make things completely open whereas um, in the very basic way of determining if you get that is if you can hook it up to Linux or any other kind of operating system through a USB cable and it and it looks to the the operating system as a drive and everything that's in that device is available to you even the firmware okay so you can change out the firmware file you can change out it and then it offers a secondary partition in case you screw that up you can always reinstall it with what is there in this secondary partition now it seems that kind of stuff does exist with Windows because you can reinstall Windows you can do what they what people have come to understand reset your device and then it just reinstalls everything over what was there and gives you a virgin environment okay that's nice but it's not it's not the good and I'll talk about that in the next video so anyhow the um, the thing that's great about the Evo it it has all these features that they put in there but the more features you put in the greater chance for it to fail 
and it does fail and it creates corrupted video files and you can't salvage them you can't really edit them without using their software and you have to do it in windows it's dependent on windows and because it's dependent on windows and reason and windows is always each successive version of windows is pushing the last version out um, at some point you're going to lose the capability to use even through the hardware to use your old version of windows to use the device and it will be tied to that old operating system release and you will at some point you'll just will lose the ability to even have the the device itself and we as consumers have just become inured to that experience that we don't feel like we have any rights to be able to discuss it you do have rights you have the rights to not buy the stuff okay that's how you solve the problem is not to buy it the the worst thing to do is not to understand it to uh, not to understand it is kind of like shooting yourself in the foot um, choosing not to understand because you feel like you're a Luddite and you, you just you know will never be able to figure out um, stuff at least understand the basics that all you have to look for in the package is if it has Linux access and can be accessed as a drive and um, doesn't require Windows, doesn't require Mac. If you can do that, all the other ones will follow through because they have to be, they have to be, because um, Windows will support, will support anything that connects to Linux because they have to in order to remain compatible okay but if it requires windows then it won't then linux can't access it and linux the reason why you want linux is because it is is basically the world okay the world is linux um, it's not windows anymore microsoft is a sub is a subset of everything in the world and the world is linux okay um, your Android phone is Linux underneath. The Mars Lander is Linux. All the cash registers in every store that you shop at has Linux. The Oculus Go has got Android in it, which is Linux. Okay, so it isn't a Windows world anymore. Microsoft's just pushing that because if they can keep you in Windows, then they can keep you dependent on Windows. And I guess I'm already going into the next video. But let's go back to this. Um, the Evo, we don't want to buy it. Um, don't buy it. Um, until these guys get to the realization that they need they need to see it says Evo is tightly integrated with go that's a joke actually it's integrated with tightly integrated with the go on Windows okay um, you can't use it through Linux okay neither um, you can use the go with Linux but you have to have ADB and you have to make yourself a you have to make yourself an Android um, developer and you have to um, you have to get ADB and you have to get MTP if you're on Linux and you have to establish a connection via ADB with the devices that are connected via ADB. All ADB is just a program that just goes out and looks to see if you have any Android devices connected to your computer via USB uh, cable. And then it, if it sees them, it'll see them if, if you have made yourself a developer with those devices because the device will say um, if if I if the device recognizes that you have enabled yourself online with it and it'll go and check the main website and it, it'll when you go to oculus and you say you're an Android developer um, the device will check home and it will see that um, that it is being used by a developer and then it'll open itself up so it can be accessed by anything and it would be nice if that was just the default but the reason why they don't do that by default is because they don't want people sideloading viruses into their goes and their devices uh, the potential of being able to sideload an uh, Android APK directly without using a store actually offers the ability to put malicious software on your on your device and um, and there's ways against that in Linux and how they do that is with the package manager which is kind of the same as a store the difference is is that a package manager in Linux is going to offer you anything you want to download and install pretty much everything whereas an Android store is going to be limited by the people who sell your your device and so with go it'll be it'll be basically Facebook it'll be Mark Zuckerberg deciding which applications um, they want to offer for money and for free 
to people that have Go's and it won't include Minecraft because Microsoft hasn't licensed them to permit them to use Minecraft even though you can use the the um, you can use the Samsung Gear VR um, executable for Minecraft on the go and play Minecraft on the go and it's 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 the but it's all corporations in control consumers not okay and so we as consumers need to push for the rights to 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 own the stuff we buy from these guys and for them not to hold a gun to our head to say you can only use this for about a year and then after that point it's going to be useless because we're going to guarantee that it won't be usable yet by you in any shape or form because we're licensing we're making the hard we're making the software so that you're you're dependent on us that can't ever happen ever again the reason why is because i'll bring it up in the other video but you'll realize that there's a lot of security implications to that for every company and this is the reason why everybody's um the reason why we're all getting screwed by um and and identity theft and all sorts of things is because these guys are holding a gun to our has, head and saying you can't have the ability to control your own hardware okay so or to control the things that you buy or to even actually own what you buy and to keep using what you bought um, without our involvement that's a problem okay so evo is that way so i call this 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 idea and it used to be called this and people didn't it lost the uh, relationship the way they think of when somebody says something's wintel they think it means it's uh it's on windows that's not what wintel means wintel the original idea of wintel as it meant about 20 years ago back in the 90s was when something was a wintel device that meant that part of the workings of the device were were um were were um were invested in the windows operating system so the windows operating system was filling out all the extra stuff that that device needed in order to work and if you didn't have windows then it couldn't work without windows and that was because windows was offering services that the software depended upon to offer things they didn't have in the hardware that's what's called wintel and so an example of that was like if you lacked a digital audio uh, converter on your modem um, you could use the cpu as a dac um, to do the do the um, digital to audio conversion to push stuff out through the modem and you do that something like that through the windows machine through the windows operating system but if you had something like linux that didn't have all that stuff that my, maybe microsoft provided to the hardware then it couldn't supplant um stuff that was in the operating system and and devices that are in the computer to make up for the things that they took off the card in order to save money and make a greater margin of a profit and um that's that's the problem is, with Wintel stuff and when you call something it say it's Wintel hardware the correct way to say it is is that it depends on Windows in order to work and the hardware will not work in any shape or form on any other operating system because the devices inside of it um, the, the services that are in it are tied up in software and are not in the hardware itself so when you're getting this the hardware it's half of the solution so Wintel hardware is basically half hardware it's not even complete it's half and the other half is filled in by the operating system so it's actually taxing your operating system in the hardware in your computer to make up for things that it doesn't have in the device itself and every programmer and every electrical engineer knows about this idea and it's what is leading a lot of companies to patent um, patent ideas patenting, patenting software because they're they're no longer really making um, unique hardware they're not making hardware that can stand alone it's hardware that's dependent on something else that offers all the components that it doesn't have in the device itself so you, it's it's like it's it's like it's at the mercy of whatever it is that it's that but 
and they claim that it's to save to save you money at a discount price but usually the case is is that somebody in China can can chunk something out that uh, like a Lenovo camera that does this all um, in, in an independent way in such a way that you don't even have to have um, really anything special in fact the VR180, the Google VR180 software that the Lenovo connects to is actually open sourced. Um, the, the operating system on the Lenovo is open sourced. It's, it act, they actually provide the source code so you can actually learn how to um, replace the firmware with something else if you wanted to. And so that's in here. So this is basically an open device for everybody in the Linux world, this is an open device. You don't need Windows for this. And because it's an open device, if you bought it now, you'll always have access to the hardware and always be able to use it. And um, I love Lenovo because that tends to be the case with everything they make. And you know what Lenovo is? It's IBM's old PC division. IBM decided to go back and work with their mainframes and they sold their PC division to a Chinese company and the name became Lenovo but it's still IBM so your IBM ThinkPads are 100% Linux compatible they don't offer anything in them that really prevents you from installing Linux they, they, they're they all open to it and the reason why is because there are a lot of people in China that require things to be Linux compatible because it's what's permitting them to produce a lot of the products it's the people that are over here in America or in, in the capitalistically driven world, uh, the software development, commercial development world, um, can't fathom the idea of, of losing, um, of, 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 um, of signing away all control rights of the device to the person they sell something to that are making everything dependent on Windows. And that is that is ruining in us in the country. And I'll talk. I'll, there's another video where I'll talk about the reason why we'll never have MAGA uh, make America great again, which is a complete myth. And I can I can do it very simply here, and I'll tell you why. If you do not offer Chinese people the the freedoms that and uh, and the and the rights uh, to work as an American and the minimum wage that we have here then they are not then the corporations are always going to favor them over us because they can abuse them they can they can make them work for less and we will always be seen in comparison to them as to what value we can offer above them and at the very basic we can't even offer any value unless we have degrees and we have things that can separate us from them and these companies are making artificial intelligence to try to reduce, to try to narrow it so that they don't even have to be dependent on people that have degrees after a while. They can just use AI in place of that. And the thing is, is that that's going to ruin them in the end because what does AI do really well? Make decisions. Who makes de who's, Whose whole um, livelihood depends on making decisions? CEOs, managers, people with degrees. People at the bottom are much harder for AI to replace. It's the people at the top. So the people who are working on getting the AI to make us, to make all of this work, uh, to make it cheaper, uh, it's just like whenever uh, Sony and them were making MPEG and they were thinking that they're going to make everything cheaper by putting video v VHS tapes onto DVDs and CDs or, or put them on to CDs that will be able to lower the price of the CDs by making, by being able to reduce everything to a smaller format, the thing is it, it stung them in the end when everybody got access to the internet and people were able to pass over these smaller formats really quickly over the internet, ruined their entire, it ruined their entire industry, it ruined the music, music industry and the movie industry, and licensing hasn't been the same since. This is what AI is going to do to everybody, to to thinking people in this world, okay, unless we do something about it. And nobody's willing to even fathom even talking about that because they're afraid that if the AGI, the, the singularity ever occurs, it'll come back and it'll give you eternal damnation um, by even having the, the idea. And the way to solve that problem is to work on an amygdala for the AI 
um, a reason for it to identify with us because without that there's no reason why it would even value us because it doesn't even identify with us okay so I'm, I'm, go I'm going way overboard and I'm just not going I'm going past the point of what I meant to talk about but the thing is the bottom line for this video is that and I'll probably talk about the other ones and go back into these subjects but um, this camera right here is really good and this camera sucks and um, no matter what they can say about this camera it's still a Wintel camera it's still dependent upon Windows and you will not be able to salvage the videos and um, you can't rely on them and they're tied to the Windows software and I'll talk about it in another video about why you don't want to be win using Windows anymore in fact in here I'm what I'm here using this Linux Lite this is Linux and I'm running it on a Windows PC that ha has Windows on the hard drive but I'm using USB to actually connect to the this is a Linux installer and normally what I did use this for is to install Linux on a computer you could actually replace Windows or make Windows um, boots um, you could make a dual boot where you could run Windows or Linux and uh, we'll talk about it in a different video but um, this again I stay away from this camera until these guys learn their lesson to start doing things the way that the Lenovo is designed to do um, and to use the Google uh, VR180 experience to connect to the camera and to separate the software from the camera that does all this other extra stuff that they're doing on the side and then they could charge money to people and, and integrate that with everybody else's cameras so that they can offer those capabilities but not tie it into the camera as a way to sell this thing because that's really not a good idea um, now if they're worried that people are going to pirate over the internet using torrents and stuff keep in mind anybody who uses a torrent to pirate stuff you're opening yourself up to malicious coders malicious coders the way they think is how do I get my software onto your computer and the easiest way crack a, a, a commercial application put in their own little malicious code into the application and put it out there for free on a torrent site and hopefully some idiot goes by downloads it installs it on their device makes it accessible to the internet if you're going to use the programs and pirate them don't be connected to the internet because that just opens you up to people to coming into your computer and sitting there observing your usage and then they're going to start like trying to steal your identity and and whatever else they can and this has happened to me on Windows um, regardless of whatever I've done with Windows even when I've done nothing with Windows just making it access to the internet it's happened to me okay and I don't know how but it has happened to me over and over again and I can detect it I know what happens when it happens okay one thing that I notice is um, the guy will open up multiple windows really quickly and then they'll disappear and if you ever see that if you ever see like six windows that are about this size like that on windows that just open up really quickly and, and they're in in kind of cascaded and then they disappear then you know you're being hacked and um, that's one of the things they do another thing they like to do is run um, they like to run video software that um, uh, desktop access software they'll run programs like um, well they they would run uh, uh, Microsoft's video software they call it uh, the stuff that everybody used to use for camera chat and um, snap or whatever that play the thing is I forget what it's called um, they'll use that and uh, I forgot what it was called I don't use it anymore but um, that that's they'll they'll use that to monitor your desktop usage and they can't do that very easily with Linux unless they put the stuff in Linux and that's how you got from Linux the thing is with Linux everything's open source and everybody can see the sources and if they were to do something like that then people would see it be happening with the source code unless they did a middleman attack and they were able to somehow in inject their stuff into your Linux distribution as you were downloading it um, so the thing is is that 
going with, uh, and I'll talk about it in another video. So I, I have a hard time really separating things out and talking about them separate. So I'll just go back and say, and maybe I'll just put it in the description for this video so people don't have to watch the video to, to learn it. I'll just tell them why not to buy this camera and why to buy the Lono. This one has good hardware. The problem is, is that the software makes you dependent upon Windows and the software in the camera does not use open formats for the video that is produced. And because of that, you cannot edit the video, you can't salvage the video. It doesn't store MP4, MPEG-4 internally. MPEG-4 is very well established. It's, it's used everywhere. It's used on your DVDs, your Blu-rays, on everything. Why not offer that as the default for this camera and then let them do all the stitching and stuff secondarily or even offer another format that is much more open or, you know, just make it open so that you can actually salvage the content when the thing fails. It doesn't and so you're at the mercy of whether or not it's going to so you're always going to have to have another camera just to guarantee um, so if you already have an Evo get a Lenovo Mirage and have them both running at the same time and if the Evo craps out then at least you have uh, the Lenovo to fall back on and that's what I would say and Lenovo got rid of this camera for what reason I have no idea uh, executives at the top making really shallow decisions without real concern. Um, it's easy because people in corporations or run corporations, they um, make decisions based on stock market, not upon what they actually know of the actual stuff they sell. And the fact that they forced their IT people to use Microsoft technologies over Linux is proof of their idiocy, of just how stupid these executives are. Um, a, a smart executive is somebody who can understand why Linux is important to them and consumers. The people who don't are the ones who should be kicked out, who should be thrown and sent overseas to some country and left to grovel in some other hell. Um, I'm not saying they should go to hell, but I'm saying that they shouldn't be running the company because they're they're going to ruin things and um, and making just shallow decisions not having enough faith in, in people being able to buy good technology. If they're not buying the technology, don't take that as a reason as to the reason why the technology shouldn't exist. Even Steve Jobs, when the Mac wasn't doing well, he was pushing for the technology even when the market said it wasn't going to work the way he wanted. It's not wasn't going to be accepted the way he wanted it was. Uh, then they brought he brought in that guy from Pepsi, and the guy just ru ruined it and screwed it in the ground. It wasn't until they came back to him 20, uh, 15 years later after he went off and worked on the next that uh, they took the next stuff and they put it into the Mac and uh, made everything work. It's um, you have to have faith in in good ideas and and to stick to them if you are going to have any um, if you're going to even. Re uh, exist in this world and um, if if you can't hang on to something uh, uh, good ideals if you can't hang on to those things then you're going to be you're gonna you're gonna be prostituted you're going to the people someone's going to figure out a way to manipulate you okay and so anyhow okay so the thing is with the Lenovo get the Lenovo if you're going to do VR camera. If you're not going to do VR camera, I'd say that's not a good idea. Everybody needs to buy these things. As sure as the countries are adopting the idea of working towards AI, we need to be adopting and working towards using VR cameras because our own news is going to be um, is going to be corrupted by things like deep faking and VR is much harder to deep fake than 2D. And so it's better to have two eyes than one. If if it, it was okay to have one eye, why did we just why weren't we just cyclops from the beginning and not two eyed people? We needed two eyes because that's what you need in order to move around in a three D universe. A two one eye is not gonna work all that well. You can go side to side, but believe me, it doesn't work very well. It makes you somebody who can only see from one perspective. 
and um, two eyes gives you two perspectives even though it's a limited perspective because it's just out of your own head you have to rely on other people's perspectives but all of you have better perspective if you have two eyes than if all of you have one eyes and having no eyes is it offers a different kind of perspective but it's it's one that has to be has to be supported by somebody that's willing to lead along a person who's blind because I mean we're blind in some area or another its ability for our brains to perceive and to collect information the ability to discuss and talk and people other people to receive that is going to determine whether or not our determine our survival okay so anyhow um, I've talked about I've talked all over this issue so I'm gonna stop the recording here